Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt Monty, joined by Joe Lissette once again. We're getting ready to kick off our quarterfinals here. Uh, we just wrapped up the seven rounds of Swiss, and uh, we watched some really sweet decks throughout the day. I know mid-round, uh, mid mid-tournament mid at least, you and I talked, there was like ten different archetypes. Yeah. Uh, like round in four, the, maybe? In the top six tables, yeah. yeah. So, uh, a little bit more of that, is, uh, as we'll see here in our top eight, has been crowned. We have um, our one seed is going to be Will Kruger. Going to be paired up against Phil Silberman, and we'll get you the uh, the bracket here in just a second so you can check it out. So Will Kruger and Phil Silberman, green-white titan. We watched uh, Will earlier in the day, I think, play this deck. Yeah, I did not watch Will, but I have seen the deck. Okay. And I didn't see uh, – I think you guys also had Silberman on camera. Sure did. I didn't see that either. So I haven't seen the Sultai Snow deck play today. Okay. So, so I'll let you handle that one. Yeah, so on, on that one, the Sultai Snow deck is kind of cool. It's got, like – these uh, these Uros. It's got a bunch of Planeswalkers. It's it's kind of reminiscent of like the Bant Snow deck, just playing like black cards, like the Thought mm -hmm. Seizes and things like that. Uh, on the other, so on that same side of the bracket, on the bottom half, we have Bill Caminos playing four color Wurza versus another Titan deck in Amulet Titan Peter Oaks. Uh, we watched actually beat Mike Fitzgerald, I believe, was the round we did of yeah, him. Yeah, we've actually seen uh, both these players on camera, and in fact, we saw Bill Caminos play this matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, which he won. Um, there might be a little hiccup in game two, but uh, he he took down the match and maybe could have won all three games. Um, but still, it's a dangerous match um, where it's basically we're putting our lock pieces from the Wurza deck versus the Titans explosive Valak yeah. action. All right, on the other half of the bracket, Joe, we've got Ivan Espinosa and Chris Ayali. Yeah, the two uh, Pennsylvania players who drove out for the event, their yeah. first time in Norwich event, are in top eight and playing against each other. Cool. And they said one of us needs to make top four to justify the trip, and they locked that down Somebody's based in. on the pairings. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's in. Uh, on the bottom half of that same side of the bracket, you got Jack Cummins versus Adam Rashig and Absent Heliod combo versus Demir Wurza. We actually watched all eight of these players throughout the day, uh, some of them pretty early, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be interesting to see. The only thing that's... I mean, we talked about the Urza versus uh, Titan dual deck, and we, we see quite a bit of that here. There's four total, I believe, and uh, half of our top eight is going to be either Urza or Titan decks. So for the main feature match, though, we're going to bring you our one seed Will Kruger on green-white Titan versus our eight seed Phil Silverman and his Sultai Snow deck. See how that one goes. Uh, how do you feel about this matchup overall, Joe? I mean, I think given time, the Titan decks are just likely to beat a lot of other things. Yeah. And I feel like Phil Silverman, the first card on the deck list is for Ice Fang Quaddle. Yeah. That card is basically the definition of giving your opponent time. Nice. So <laughs> I I don't know how the matchup's going to play out. I am not confident about Phil Silverman's side. Maybe he gets help in the sideboard. Looks like a little bit, but boy, I mean, we're on counters, which, I mean, how good are counters against Primeval Titan decks historically? Not great. Yeah. Uh, Cavern of Souls plays a big role. Two of them, yeah. And then um, we have, well, we have removal, which is marginal. So, and we have a clock in Tarmogoyf. And we've got the Tarmogoyf half. Yeah, the Tarmogoyf, Tarmogoyf half's Uro, good. We can get it done. Yeah. Tarmogoyf, thoughts is Tarmogoyf Uro, that's good. Uh, Ice Fing Quaddle, Fatal Push, and. Force of negation, we're going to struggle. Good. Yeah. All right, sounds like we're going to jump down to game number one here. We're going to have Will Kruger again. He's the one seed, so has the option to play or draw every single step of the way here in our mm -hmm. top eight. And Will. And I, I like Will's side. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm with you there. Yeah. The Titan deck is generically powerful and uh, looks going to look pretty good against the Sultai Snow deck in general, I would imagine. All right, so Will finds Field of the Dead with this. Once upon a time here. Yeah, and aside from the Valica triggers, I mean, there's not a good answer to just zombies either right. in, in Phil's deck. All right, so there's Phil of the Dead. And Phil going to shock in. Looks like Dotsies. All right. You mentioned it. This is part one of the combo that you said you needed in order to mm -hmm. pick up a game here. And uh, so we have a lot of lands. Three lands in Will's hand, along with a Dryad of the Elysian Grove, an Explorer, and a Sakura Tribe Elder. So this is a n nice hand for Will. The the Dryad and the Valakut combo together, obviously. So is that what Phil's looking for here? I think there's a decent chance. Yeah, the yeah. Dryad's definitely the best card in the yeah. hand. The rest of them are just lands, Yeah, you know? So yeah. all those cards are just lands. All right, so you see Dryad of the Elysian Grove. One of those really powerful cards from Theros Beyond Death. Uh, three mana, two, four, enchantment creature. It's a nymph. 
Uh, you may play an additional land on each of your turns, so it's a ramp spell. Uh, and also, lands you control have are every basic land type in addition to their other types. So, uh, Prismatic Omen is what it's been likened mm -hmm. to. So, yeah, a rare creature from Theros Beyond Death where you open it up and limit it, and you're like, well, this isn't too exciting. <laughs> it's sort of playable. Yeah. But uh, you throw it in this modern Titan deck, and it's a powerhouse. Yeah, it's crazy. You and I watched a game where it just, you know, it just destroyed with Valica. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's really changed the way... These, these Titan decks can now be even greedier. They don't have to choose kind of what... The, are they going to be Red Green, Valakid, Scape Shift? Or right. are they going to be, you know, Amulet with, you know, Splash Little Dead? Now they can play everything. Yeah, you get them all. All right, so we're going to explore. Going to play a couple lands out. And uh, I think he actually picked up a Summoner's Pact for the turn, which is bad news for Phil Silverman. <laughs> yeah, nothing here is good. We need to have Tarmogoyf followed by, I don't know, Uro or Tarmogoyf. Or Uro for, into Force Negation is another good one. Yeah, well, hey, he's yeah. got two thirds okay. of the pieces yeah, you asked for, Joe. He, he, and those were the most important two. All right. I'm not sure that even puts him ahead, but uh, <laughs> he's he's playing ball. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, four or five Tarmogoyf is pretty big currently. That uh, that Dryad is an enchantment in addition to being a creature. Mm -hmm. So, four cards in the graveyard, four points of power for Tarmogoyf. There's Sakura Tribe Elder. That's a roadblock for now. Yeah, super irritating. Uh, Ramp spell that also manages to absorb four damage. All right. And we're going to play. It's like Selesnia Sanctuary is the play there. And uh, going to send it back to Phil Silverman. Phil needs another thought. It's easier, I think, is, is what he's in the market for. Yeah, because Will's going to be approaching six mana next turn. Wow, there wasn't a land in the graveyard yet. Okay, so. Okay, that's Powers up Tarmogoyf. Yeah. Obviously, secure tribe scout or tribe elder. Excuse me. It's going to be a roadblock for this Tarmogoyf at least probably this turn to ramp Will up. An island, and there is an Arkham's Astrolabe for Phil. Find another Tarmogoyf. Okay. Right. I mean, okay. you mentioned he's playing ball. He's yeah. got. He's gonna have ten power on the field here. Yeah. Are you, are you thinking that's going to do it? I, I mean, it's good. It's yeah, not. It's it, not yeah. stellar, but yeah. I mean, you got you got a chance. Five mana on the board for Will Kruger. Yeah, we know he has a shock land mm -hmm. in hand. So Phil's going to need a force of negation for this uh, pact if, if Will has one. And he's got well, a pair in his there, deck. Yeah, there are two copies. And <laughs> Will's just like, yeah, you have this covered? No. Oh, boy. All right, so Will going to grab a primeval titan out of his deck here. And then just a customary... Brief shuffle. Don't touch my deck because I'm about to play this time. Yeah, Titan. We're uh, so we've shocked twice, but again, that's the only damage we've even taken on Will's yeah. side. So we'll plays Primeval Titan. And, uh, man. So we're going to get some zombies here to go with this. As long as we yeah. pick two oh, lands that are not oh, already on the board. There's Bajookabog, too, in this deck. I forgot about Bajookabog uh, and Blast yeah. Zone. Come yeah. on, man. So is this going to be twice today already we've seen Primeval Titan fetch Bajookabog, Bajookabog myself. Yeah. Are we going to see it again? Looks like it. So Bajookabog, <laughs> it's, oh man, this <laughs> stupid primeval titan, man. Oh, it's really good though. Yeah, so it's going to be able very, to. It's just, it's very well designed. Yeah, this deck is, this deck is very good. And you can see Will just making sure he's going to Bajookabog, and there's the blast zone I mentioned. So yeah, Bajookabog himself. himself. Yep. These Tarmogoyfs have shrunk to two threes. And two zombies for Will. Now this is over over time over. in the last year. Oh, what's the, the game? The game. Yeah. The, the, the last year, or so you <laughs> hear people complain about different cards in modern. Oh, you got to ban Urza. You got to ban, you know, whatever different cards. Uh -huh. Underworld Breach now, different stuff. No one ever talks. I never hear anyone talk about banning Primeval Titan. Yeah. They talk about banning ta Urza's Tower. Right. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. Ban Ban Veil of Summer. Primeval Titan. It's quite annoying. Is a menace. How is this card it doesn't even get discussed? And it's so good. Yeah, it's quite annoying. So I'm not at all biased by the fact that I've been playing decks that lose to it for like five years. Oh in no, that, I totally didn't read that at I'm all. I'm speaking <laughs> for the masses. <laughs> Primeval Titan is a menace. Phil Silverman going to lead off on a Thought Scour, targeting himself. Mills two lands, draws a land, and uh, sends it back Will Kruger's way. And Phil just kind of going to be at Will's mercy. So going to Will's going to pay for this Summoner's Pact from last Good choice. Time. Yeah, I like the I like that. Good long Shrine line. Then we can attack, and well, do we? Maybe we don't even attack here. Do we attack and trade him for Tarmogoyf, or just wait until we can? I, I mean, blast if he has a carry, if he has a carry here, he can he can bog. Oh, he can't bog Phil. He doesn't have a. 
additional land drop to make here, but I, I think this is fine. Yeah. I mean, we'll trade for one. Yeah. We could even set up a Teleria West, maybe, although we don't have blue mana right now. Yeah. Oh, actually, he can. We can Vesuva he can to Vesuva. Not knock the other graveyard out. That yeah. will work. And then another Field of the Dead? Sure. Yeah, why not, man? He looked like he pulled forward again. Another Field, and there's Cavern of Souls. Okay. Okay. You gotta put some dice on these zombies to signify how many there are, and there are now six. That's a lot. Yeah, and Phil's gonna line up a double block, as we mentioned here. All right, so Primal Titan is dead. Yes. Yes, it is. You are... That is a fact. I cannot argue with you, Joe. So now we have eight zombies on the board, uh -huh. rapidly on our way to ten. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's Phil's sick. at 13. Outrageous. Yeah, we're just... What are we... There's a Jason hand. We could bounce a zombie. We could block Great. a zombie. We'd only take 12 oh, plus... Nice. Two. We'd only take six... We're At the moment, we could only take... We could set our... We could deploy our Jace block and only take 16 next turn. Yeah, Phil is uh, under some pressure, as they say. Yes, so yes. If we had explosives for zero and some sort of land destruction spell. So, Phil going to maybe we could bounce. Make some headway here. A zombie. Alright, and then uh, we're going to fetch with that windswept teeth here. What else has he got? To Actually, do? we can also put a counter on blast on. We don't even need to block one token. Nope. If... Will chooses to do that, which really he doesn't need to if he doesn't want to. I don't know. He wants to. Man. Yeah. This is uh, this is lethal. This is uh, this is going to be lethal here from from Will's side here. So I'll do the math for you, Joe. You get to multiply that number nine times two, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how much damage is coming at Phil. And, I uh, noticed you does. didn't actually. Supply us with the total. You just told us what the question oh, was. I asked you to do the math, sir. Oh, I see. I thought you were. I, <laughs> I don't. We were just no, I'm just a question guy. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to pick not, up nine times two. I'm pretty sure is Omega dead. Omega. Is yeah. Answer, was yeah. Absolutely crushed. So Wilker going right. to pick up game number one here in our first quarterfinal matchup. Uh, unsurprising, honestly. Yeah, that's what we expect. All right. So. Let's start with Phil Silver on sideboard. He needs help. Yeah. So we've got one force negation, two disdainful strokes. That's a good one. Two Mystical Disputes, one Kalidus Trader of Get, two Dead of Winter, two Veil of Summer, two Damping Sphere, All right. three Ashiok. There's Reminder. the meat and potatoes. Yes, so Ashiok and Disdainful Stroke, um, both very strong. Yeah. Disdainful Stroke can be shut down by the Cavern, like we said yep. in the intro. Ashiok, though, shuts down just Searching, which not only cripples Primeval Titan, but also... Um, fetch lands, summoners packed. Yeah. Um, there's explorer. There's yeah. There's or there's uh, uh, Circular Tribe Elder. Tribe Elder. Yep. Yeah. So there, that's going to do some work. Yep. Those are absolutely coming in. That's five cards. Uh, Phil can probably trim out some of his removal. I don't know how Fatal Push can function against um, Dryad. Yeah. Which is nice. Ice Fang Quaddle maybe could go here. Um, that's just not yeah. going to do much. I actually watched Phil in an off-camera feature match earlier today. He played against uh, Amulet Titan. Not, so not the same mm -hmm. deck. Um, he had the Damping Spheres, and they were, uh, they're were they obviously much better in that matchup yeah. uh, than this matchup. I, I, are, you think they're worthwhile I in mean, this matchup still? They, they, they just locked down the castles, right? And there's some there's bounce some lands. There's some bounce yeah. lands. We saw that earlier today in a match uh, Wyatt and I covered, and the... The Demonstrator did come in, yeah. and it did do some help, yeah. but it was not enough on its own. Yeah, it's not really impressive in this matchup mm -hmm. in particular. Uh, I did watch Will or Phil, excuse me. Um, he left those. The uh, Fatal Pushes were okay. Mm -hmm. You can you can kill the early mana creatures. I mean, for this, though, it's like yeah. there, there's there's less worthwhile ones in, mm -hmm. in Will's deck. So it's going to be interesting. I think Phil's definitely behind... Uh, in this matchup, we do have uh, we have a player slide for Phil. He's been a regular in the yeah. energy series, and here it is. Take a look at uh, Phil Silverman, thirty years old data analyst, lives in Chicago, which is a. I mean, when you say you live in Chicago, you mean the greater Chicago area. You can yeah. be talking about any number of places. Sure could. Um, a couple top eights on the Ridge series. One win was that with Storm last year, I believe. Yeah, we, I was there for that one. That was an early one, I think. Yeah, actually. it was. It was maybe like March or something in Legacy. Um, has had success, um, some success on the Star City circuit as well as locally in the Nerd Rage events. Favorite card from Theros Beyond Death, Elspeth Conqueror's deck. That is a nice one. That's a great That's one. a good card. Maybe yeah. not quite uh, modern playable, but no. uh, certainly a nice one to open in the booster pack, unlike yeah. Dragon's Legion Grove. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you that there. Um, so I'm thinking about 
Will's sideboard as these guys are still shuffling mm -hmm. up. So let's go, um, we'll go back to uh, the main screen. Yep, there so, we go. So Will has three Path to Exile, two Celestial Purge, two Rest in Peace, three Avon Mind Sensors, two Tireless Trackers, a Reclamation Sage, and two Veil Summer. He's got some good ones. Uh, the Veils really stick out, uh, and the Tireless Trackers are pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, things that help you resolve Titan. We have the Caverns. We know that. And Veil Summer can do the same thing. Yeah. And that's it also stops the Thoughtseize, which takes it preemptively, which is great. Yeah. Because um, that's primarily what the deck is focused on. Tyler Tracker seems very strong against a deck where you're like if we're playing against the Just Guy Sensei combo, that's not gonna do you any good. Right. Here it's great. It's just gonna um, it can block, eventually trade with Tarmogoyfs, and then also just draw you cards and get you into the longer game where if you get to the longer game, it allows you to play kind of the value game, which is yeah what you what you're looking for. For sure. Alright, so Will is actually from the Chicagoland area as well. Mm -hmm. He actually put an actual city, not Chicago. He put Elmhurst. Okay, so well, that's well, we respectable. can appreciate him. Yeah, yes, respectable. Uh, he actually goes to school down at Illinois State University in Bloomington, Normal, Illinois. That's where I'm from. Uh, I usually scoop this guy up, and he just crushes tournaments and crushes Magic Online things. Uh, you see his his uh, Twitter handle at xwhale underscore, and he uh, he goes by that on. Magic Online as well. He's the trophy leader, I believe, currently in Modern. He's been playing some of this uh, green-white Titan mm -hmm. deck on there, so I'm not really shocked to see him doing well today. I uh, had a, kind of a rough day yesterday, but, I mean, Modern is basically his bread-and-butter format. Yeah, well, it shows. He's on top of the heap so far today. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, Ox of Agonis is his favorite card from Theros Beyond's uh, death. I didn't see any of that card. Did you guys do Dredge today at all? No, we didn't. I know oh. I, A player showed me his deck yesterday that was going to play Ox and Dredge today, but I didn't actually see it. Huh. Uh, maybe it didn't go so well for yeah, him. Yeah, probably not great. I didn't see a ton of dredge today. That's usually the case. It's not very popular. It, it was a memory sluice tome scour dredge, mm. which is maybe not the right way to be building it right now. I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway, so here we are, game two. Um, would you say both players around six? So um, Phil maybe shocks in. six cards is still enough to have a plenty, plenty of functional hand. Yeah. Phil shocking in on turn one probably signifies like uh, tome, uh, Thought Scour or something like that. Yeah, yeah, some sort of cantrip. There we go. All right. Get those lands out of the way. Yeah. All right, so he finds... Looks like he's actually got an Ashiok, okay. an Archmage's Charm, and a Cryptic Command. Well, so the Ashiok's that. great because it's going to line up perfect with the search for tomorrow. Yeah, this is, this is actually quite funny that uh, mm -hmm. you get to suspend the search for tomorrow mm -hmm. and then you get to still play <laughs> once by time for free here. This is an interaction I've uh, had come up not with Ashiok so much, but with Little Teferi. But either works the same way against Searcher Tomorrow, where the player suspends it oh. on turn one, and then you get to make your third land drop first, and then play the Planeswalker that prevents it from actually working. And that is a liability, certainly, on Search for Tomorrow. Gotcha. You. So you see this card here for three mana. You get to search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. It also has Suspend 2, which is the more popular mode that we see here. Uh, for one mana, you get to sus suspend it for two. Counter comes off during each of your turns, and then it comes off the suspend on that third turn and ramps you up. So I believe Will also has a fetch land in hand. I might have caught sight of Windswept Teeth, and this that's going to make this doubly bad because he chose to play Radiant Fountain this turn, and if Ashiok comes down here, then that Windswept Teeth is just a piece of cardboard that is going to do nothing except take out real estate on the board. What do you what do you think the um the what do you think the motivation is to play that Radiant Fountain? That is not an Ashiok. It's not Ashiok, okay. You led me astray. It's not Ashiok, the first card? No, I meant that he put it into play. Oh, sure. Um, it looks like there's an Ashiok in hand there. Maybe he did not have the third land, so... Oh, Phil missed the land that, drop. Uh, that is costly, as it is going to enable two, two additional lands for Will that just would not have existed otherwise. Yeah, he missed the land drop. Uh, so your question was, why would you play Radiant Fountain instead mm -hmm. of Windsoap Teeth? Um, per perhaps because I misread his hand. Okay. Um, that is certainly possible. Oh, there's a Titan. There, oh boy. And Phil has Archmage's Charm in hand. Wow, he's toasted. He's toasted. Yes. That's he uh, so a, 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 a real reason to wait on the Windswept Teeth would be you'd want to wait until you had um, either Phil the Dead or Valakut in play. Yeah. Because then you'd get a free trigger by waiting and holding it. So it's still very possible that, that is in his hand. And uh, Phil, kind of with his head in his hands a little bit here, as he uh, he can read the writing on the wall just as well as we can, and that uh, his tournament might be over. Yeah, it's pretty rough to miss the third land, uh, play the Astrolabe, and then yeah. find the third land. He had tons going on. There was... Uh, I mean, he yeah, because he had... He, he had a, a holding, charm. Holding up the charm 
or playing the Ashiok. Either way, you can handle So basically, if you trade either one of those cards for a land, then you have this turn handled. Instead, you're facing down a lot yeah. of ugly stuff. Yeah, not great. So you see the... The rainbow amount of lands here. Is the requisite seven for Field no, of the Dead. I think it's actually. Is he short? Oh, he's got six, double castle. There's two castles, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Will will have to live with just getting a 6 6 and two lands that will I wreak guess, havoc next turn. I guess Phil has Assassin's Trophy, but is that even like good enough here? I mean, I don't see how you can't. You can't not play it. Yeah, right? I'm with you. Um, this will create a zombie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Will has... Uh, as long as Will doesn't get a forest, and he... He has a snow-covered forest. Available. Oh, I see. He has sure. a regular old yep. forest down there in the bottom. Snowlands enabling all kinds of nonsense all over the place. It's, it's not not the greatest look for, for modern. All right, so you see the Assassin's Trophy take down Primeval Titan and uh, Phil Silberman. Going to untap and try and find a way to win the game. So what are we, what are we even hoping for here? I, I like... I what don't know. Do, yeah. I, do, I don't know. There's the, Jace is a decent one. Gets a I tick mean, up over and yeah. over, but it was just there's no undoing the field of the dead on in the on the board. There's no land destruction in in Phil's deck. No um, field of the dead. So I mean, just assassin's trophy, and that's it's already been used. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there is an attack for two. Phil down to fourteen, and Will Kruger going to looks like he has pack the negation. Or a pact of uh, summoner's pact, excuse me, in hand. Yeah. Mm. Well, he actually has, bizarrely enough, as opposed to, you know, ages past where the summoner's pact is just always getting primeval titan at this point. Now we have a real question of do we get titan or do we get the dryad? And he has the dryad in hand, actually. Well, here. then never mind. So and it's, it goes with tracker, which is also great. This is just... It's oh, a bait spell. Yeah, I mean, Phil, boy, I mean, you, you counter a, a card that's very, very good against you, and your opponent just doesn't even pass a the turn. They just play another one, even worse. Man. Yeah, this one's this one's another over, partner. field, another uh, whatever, and then I, four zombies. I wonder if like the, uh, this is probably gonna sound sketchy, but with with Phil's deck, like the Sultai deck, mm -hmm. I wonder if you need to play something like Virulent Plague in order to have a way to get around these zombies. I, I just it doesn't. I mean, it's just a very narrow card, though. I think I you just like fold these matchups though. I, I you can't. I know you can't fold this matchup. Though. There's I too know. much of it. The deck is too good to fold against it. I don't know what you do, but you need something. You need more than Phil has. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah, it seems tough. So again, the board is loaded up with five zombies and a primeval titan. I mean, this is lethal next turn. Just mm -hmm. just casually. Yeah. And Will's barely broken a sweat this game. No, to be honest, either one of the games. He hasn't had to do much work. He's just. Goldfish, his ideal, ideal draws, and Phil hasn't been able to even come close to keeping up. Yeah. What what could these these colors are just not equipped to deal with lands? That's just the way it is, and so you need to find some answer to this this archetype. If you want to play Sultai Snow or anything like this, how are you going to find the answer to Titan? You can use the extraction effects. Yeah. Um, which aren't even necessarily guaranteed to go off fast enough, but it's something. They all get countered by Veil of Summer, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you can do... How can you attack the lands? You can play the Ashiok, which would work. May just mean, you just may need more of these cards. Yeah, that's that's pretty fair. Because um, that's kind of the way it was at the Players Tour last week in Pioneer. A lot of players had the right cards to deal with the top decks, but they only had like one or two of them. And you just... You need to respect the top decks, and so Man. this is the top dog in, t in modern right now. And you need you can't get by with just a couple Man. defensive cards. You need a lot. Man, this deck Phil has only has twenty one lands in it. I think seventy. Hmm. I mean, there are some cantrips. Twenty one total lands okay. though in a, in a deck that's trying yeah. to cast Jace and yeah, Uro. Well, but there there are but you know Uro, Ice Fang, yeah. Quaddle. There are cantrips here. Um, I get it. There's Thought Scour. Okay, there's only Thought Scour. There's no Opt. Uh, is there Serum Visions? There is not. There's Astrolabe. Okay, so there's two sets of cantrips. Yeah. So there's definitely some stuff to enable things. Uh, Ice Fang Quaddle hits the board. It actually stayed in, which, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just, I don't know what. What's the snake going to do against a Titan? Uh, it's going to absorb one damage. And die, and he will die. Yeah. He actually has to block a zombie here, I think. Because it nets but there's no, two damage. There's no, and there's no, I mean, we're kind of just 
we stop taking this seriously because there's no. You look at Phil's deck list. There's no hope, yeah. really. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, and he and he and he offers a hand. You just can't. Yeah. He's just not equipped to handle the Titan deck. Yeah. And that's that's a dangerous spot to be in. So, but either he maybe was fortunate a couple times today, maybe he didn't have to face it, um, because even you know in modern the top deck of the format isn't. It's not like it's forty percent of the field. Yeah. It's going to be you know some fraction of that. So mm -hmm. you can you can get away with just dodging it for for a while, but not all the way through. And uh, Phil ends up taking the loss here in the top eight. Yeah, it's pretty fair. So uh, Will Kruger, yeah, going to punch his ticket to the semifinals. Mm -hmm. This green white Titan deck it looks really powerful. Just generically, I mean, it's full of four ofs. It's very consistent in what it's doing and mm -hmm. uh, really powerful. So congrats to him for making the semifinals here. Uh, we do have a backup match. I think it's going on still. So we have uh, Chris Ayali is our sixth seed playing a green-white devoted druid. And he's playing against Ivan Espinosa, who you mentioned. Yeah. These guys from Pennsylvania. And Ivan is uh, our three seed playing blue-white control. And uh, going to be on the uh, on the play in this match. Mm -hmm. So so these players um, drove here together. They lived together. They were friends in uh, Southern California but before they decided to move across the country. So I would say normally you're playing against the friend you went to the tournament with. You would know the matchup inside now. Yeah. Both of you would. Um, that's not true in this particular case because I haven't put this deck together at two o'clock this morning. <laughs> but um, nice. Yeah. So he's obviously done well. He's um, had experience with the archetype before. Yeah, I think it he won a Star City Classic. Yeah, he did. Not too long ago. Um, so he, on the play against the devoted druid matchup. Uh, I feel like blue white may have a decent shot here. Yeah, I think so. So uh, we're going to jump down to the match here, and I, I think the blue white's a little bit favored. Mm -hmm. Supreme Verg's very good. Uh, spot removal is, is is pretty okay. So, all right. So we are time shifted here. This is game number one. We'll see if we can catch up to where they're at as Ivan leads us off on an opt. And he has a mana leak in hand. It's pretty solid on yeah. the play. Mana yeah. leak's great. Yeah, I think you just pass and hope to catch Devo Druid right here. Yeah. All right, so Chris, it's funny they moved at the same time. It looks really weird to me because they both have the same jerseys. It looks really strange. <laughs> uh, these jer jerseys, I believe, are from uh, Top Deck Keep, which is a store in Riverside, California, okay. I think. Okay. All right. You see a uh, temple garden here, another temple garden, and there's, yeah, you mentioned yeah. the druid there's getting the druid. get picked off here. Yeah. All right, Manalik, pretty strong on the play, I think. Yeah, Ivan picks up another opt. Ooh, main phase opt. I wonder if there's a third land I'll here. Say, looking for land. Yeah, there's Sends not there. Get oak. Okay, there's a vizier in here. Actually, two viziers. All right, there's a vizier for Chris and a noble hierarch. Okay. Chris, I believe, is playing four copies of Postmortem Lunge. Yeah. So that the devoted druid in the graveyard is actually a possible way to activate the combo. Yep. In combination with the vizier that's on the board, that oh. was on the board. Yeah, there's Winds of Abandon. All right, so Winds of Abandon. going to go ahead and get rid of that vizier of remedies. And Chris going to fetch out a forest. But, yeah, I believe there is another vizier in hand. I have not, I don't know that there's a the postmortem lunge, but if there was, uh, Chris would be uh, live here to, to combo out. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to sacrifice that. Horizon Canopy and draw a new card is Chris. I'm going to attack Ivan down to 19. And here's that backup Vizier remedy, as you mentioned, partner. I think there might be another backup Vizier now. A lot of oh, maybe not. Oof. Okay. Well, okay. Two down as far as one half the combo. This is a deck that doesn't have to win by comboing, right. although it's definitely much easier that way. Yeah. Yeah, there was a third, third Vizier. Yeah. Jeez. All right. For one, Text down to 18. Away. So Ivan is at 18 here. Our life total is having a little bit of a malfunction. So, And more Field of Ruins. Ivan, in the matches we've seen today, has done a terrific job of drawing Field of Ruins. Yeah, yeah that's definitely They're fair. not going to be as useful here, but uh, they just come flying off the top of the deck in all scenarios, apparently. Yeah, Chris has three total basic lands. Two fours and a plane, so... Well, that is going to be more than enough. <laughs> okay, there I go. It's going to be more than enough to dissuade Ivan, and then... Uh, as I say that, he prepares to fire one up. <laughs> yeah, doesn't end up going for it. All right, so Chris. And there is another Noble Hierarch. All right. 
adding an additional point of pressure to the uh, to the table on Ivan's end. And now Ivan's going to go for that field of run here. Okay. And does Chris have? No, he's the one not playing any uh, collected companies, right? Right, he is not. Okay, okay. We're just on tutors. Okay. All right, so Ivan trying to fix up his man a little bit. He was missing blue sources mm -hmm. and... Uh, Right. In fact, I think we did. We get the second. Looks white like we grabbed a plane. Yeah, we got a second white, so we can verdict. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a big turn there. Yeah. And uh, Chris is just down to three lands here. Uh, Chris might have the fourth vizier in his hand. That might wow. be his last card. Okay. Looks like a bunch of lands and just a pair of. Uh, oh, he's got. Just a giver of runes going to be the take here. All right. Well, there's how many? How many verdicts? In Ivan's deck two, correct? Uh, yeah, I believe Ivan's on two supreme. Okay. Verdicts. So I think for on Chris's side, we just. Go ahead and throw down everything we have, and it's a druid. And I'm, yeah. I think the fourth vizier is actually in Chris's hand. Okay. I don't think there's any more cards, so oh. there's no win available at the moment. Ivan has a cryptic command in hand now. He's got a path to exile, so that's mm, that's it's ambitious. Yeah. To go for that well, one. he so he's giving that one a second thought. All right, Ivan decides to go uh, for the combo. Ah, he has nothing to do. Okay, <laughs> takes the devoted right after all. Yeah, decides to go for the combo creature here. And uh, this is going to be the third land, basic land, out of Chris's deck. So this field of ruin is going to be strip mine again. Yeah. <laughs> and it's possible Ivan knows that. Yeah. In fact, although we're in top eight now, do the players have each other's deck list yeah. during? Although, so when, even when you receive the opponent's deck list, it's not guaranteed that you're going to actually yeah. remember the number of basic lands That's that they were That's definitely playing. fair. All right, there's the Vizier. Ivan needs a blue source, though, so mm -hmm. I would be shocked if he's not going to gonna feel just just, just this, out of necessity. Yeah, yeah you know? right, just to fix the mana. All right, yep, going to go for it. And uh, that's down, and, and Chris going to just shuffle his deck. And All right. That's pretty good. Pretty good for uh, Ivan. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's getting there on mana. Chris is basically out of everything. Uh, for those watching at home, it might be confused when Ivan fetched up a card and put it face down on the table. What, what's happening there is something that a shortcut that players make sometimes when both players are fetching is you just fetch your land, but don't reveal it to the other player. That way you don't have to wait. And then once the other player makes their choice, then you can just flip it over and show them. But that way you don't have to wait. Yep. They don't have to wait while you're actually searching. So Ivan now has a uh, Cryptic Command mana available. He's going to take the time to snap Caster Mage. That's pretty solid, too. Mm -hmm. I wonder if so he's going to just fire a block off. Mm, well, he may not have... I mean, I mean, if Chris goes to give protection from from White uh, with his Path Exile, he can just he can he can get just both creatures. Yeah. Mm. He better block the uh, Vizier. Yeah. And then Path the, the Giver. And, I mean, Path well, is just a straight-up Vindicate here, yeah. too. Yeah. So, yeah, if we're targeting Path, then... Yeah, we probably just line up the block for yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, I don't know that we're gonna get both. Yeah, now he's not gonna get both. Yeah. So our Path to Exile are gonna come at the Vizier. And again, that's just They're gone. Gone. Uh there, that's all four? There's all four are gone. There is one in the graveyard, which oh, for lunge. can be hit by a postmortem lunge. Okay. Oh, oh that's a eternal witness. Oh, it's a witness, excuse yeah. me, that's a witness, yeah. Okay, so the combo is still alive. And at least one positive for Chris, he can't draw any more unnecessary viziers because there aren't any. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Ivan doing some thinking here. Looks like he's got Jace, a couple cryptic commands. He's got a lot of stuff going on. There comes Jace, the mind sculptor. And what's the line here? He's got force negation in hand as well. So I'm going to go ahead and brainstorm. Ivan likes to brainstorm with Jace. Mm hmm here it seems pretty safe. Yeah. Uh, unlikely. I guess a ballista could shoot down sure. the snapcaster. Other than that, this chase is likely to survive. And even in that case, the ballista would have to use itself up. Yeah. All right. Some people asked about the snow lands in this uh, blue-white deck. Um, I don't know that there's really a reason. I I don't think there's. I don't. I don't think there's a reason why there's 
Is there snow lands in this no, deck? I don't think no, there's there no are. snow there lands. There are no snow lands in the deck. Yeah, somebody said any reason for snow lands in blue white. There are none. Those are all just basics. Yeah. Uh, but if you're asking for potential reasons, uh, if you're playing Gifts Ungiven, sure. it allows you more targets. Yep. That's the only obvious one that comes to mind. Yeah. I guess you could represent having um, the the snow... Um, Onthanice? Onthanice, yes. Okay. You could represent that okay. if you had... Yeah, so uh, you missed Ivan there, went ahead and fetched out the Mystic Sanctuary to put Supreme Verdict on top, and then Wraths the board again and sets Chris back a substantial amount. <laughs> and there's the Vizier that he knew of, Ivan did. So Chris actually kind of, I don't know if it's hurting him too much, but only on three land, his three yeah. basics. I think, it, how many lands have been just used up this game? I Four, I think. Yeah, I think two, so. can two canopies were sacrificed, and then two, two field runs. Yeah. So, all right. So there's <laughs> Cryptic commanding a Noah, <laughs> a Noah Hierarch. We've seen them more than once today. Yeah. Yeah. It's what funny. What are the odds? I don't know. It's pretty low. And then going to go ahead and bounce the detention sphere, which is pretty pretty important here. It's it's a good line. He's going to grab both viziers with this now. Yeah. So that's pretty nice for Ivan. So I'm going to go ahead and yeah, just detention sphere both yeah, of these. That's so pretty nice play. Yeah. All all so two viziers on detention sphere, two exiled. From the graveyard. All right. So, yeah, you see Detention Sphere here. Pretty powerful card from, uh, I believe it's Return to Ravnica. It's uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-land permanent, not named Detention Sphere. And all the permanents with the same name as that permanent. So, you see both Viziers hanging out underneath that mm -hmm. sphere. Is that something? Can Chris even get rid of that in the main deck? I don't think he has a way. I don't I mean, think so either. And if he cannot, and no, he can't. Then the combo is off. The main line combo is offline. It cannot be achieved with the remaining cards Chris has available. And Ivan is aware of that, so that's gotta feel pretty nice. All right. So there's another cryptic command for a noble hierarch, Joe. Well, it's okay. We got a birds of paradise <laughs> to replace it. Not yeah. quite the same. All right. So I'm gonna one tap and draw here. I mean, I was only at eight, so Chris could win with damage. It's not going to be easy, especially yeah. since he's down so many cards. Yeah. But Another Mystic Sanctuary out, and uh, there's three yeah. in Ivan's deck. Mm -hmm. What did he put on top? I missed it there. Uh, I believe that was a Cryptic Command. Cryptic Command, okay. Yeah, he's just going to start the loop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Chris is in, in trouble here. There's a Vendillion click for Ivan. Postmortem Lunge is a card. Yeah, I don't think we need to worry just about it here, though, as with no Vizier. Yeah, okay, Ivan takes it anyway. Yeah, why not? Because why not? Yeah, because why Chris not? might replace it with something better. No, that's okay. No, that's impossible? That's not possible. All right. All right, so Chris, down to nine from that attack from the Vanillion Click. There's Giver of Runes. Well, that can at least, that can allow the Birds of Paradise to block the Vanillion Click. Sure. That all looked like a... Uh, Teferi Hero of Dominaria was the pick. That's a... Nope, baby. Baby Teferi. So... <laughs> Cards just... Yeah. Flowing through Ivan's hands. Yeah, here. Ivan's in great shape here. And uh, Chris might have to block before too long here. He might have to block before he's able to give it protection with the giver at this point. Depending on what Ivan has left over. You gotta give yourself a chance to win. Yeah. Uh, you gotta take this here. I think go to three. I think you gotta take it. No, Chris All blocks. Right, so he sends the blocker in. All right. Yeah, that's another fetch land though for for Ivan. And I think that's gonna be just another uh, another Mystic Sanctuary and that should seal the deal. That should seal the deal because it's yeah, that's, in question it's at this point. It's close. It's yeah. a close game. <clears throat> I mean, life total wise, yeah, Ivan's only up by one point. <laughs> someone some would argue that Chris is ahead currently. I, <laughs> I don't, I'm, I don't know if I'm familiar with any people like that, but uh, yeah, this one's this one's all over here. It looks like so. Ivan's blue white deck has looked pretty good all day, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen, uh, we've seen him play several times. Did he play against Infect one he of the did. times he you watched? Against Infect. Yeah. That was a that was very close. And in fact, actually, the match, the game that he lost, he actually shouldn't have. Okay. Um, a scenario where the um, Infect player. Needed a counter, has uh, has spell pierce, and then said fetch spell pierce, and I even said okay, 
and the effects player did not have a blue source to fetch. Perfect. But right. uh, Ivan didn't realize that until he was in the middle of sideboarding, nice. and thus was steaming a little bit, uh, but managed to win the last game of the match. All right. Chris down to three here, and you see Ivan picks up that uh, cryptic command, and the game's over. So Ivan Espinosa going to pick up game number one here in our second quarter final. So let's see. Uh, sideboards just real quick, Joe. Okay. Uh, we can run through them while we're in the middle of the game if we want to do that as well. So on Ivan's side, he's got uh, two Mystical Disputes, three Ashok Dream Render, a Circle of Protection Red, two Celestial Purge, two Stony Silence, two Rest in Peace, a Timely Reinforcements, and two Aether Gusts. All right. Aether Gust looks good. Yeah. Maybe something else. Next. Next. Okay. Uh, Chris Ayali, Devoted Druid, two Path to Exile, three Veil Summer, two Burned and Fortuner, two Bit Damping Sphere, two Collector Oof, one Gaddick Teague, Two Mirror Crusader, one Night of Autumn. All right. I think Real Summer looks good. Gag Teague. Gag might be okay. Okay. I'm in. Yeah. All I'm right. Into it. Let's go. We're uh, jumping through this as we. This was the last match in the quarterfinals, so we're going to try and get this done. Okay. I'm pretty into Night of Autumn as well from the board. Uh, it hits Detention Sphere, and it's also just a body yeah. if you need to attack. Yeah. yeah. So pretty into the flexibility on that one. Yeah, there might have been even actually more cards that were worthwhile in Ivan's sideboard, but we were told to hurry, so I just jumped through. <laughs> That's what happens when you That's when true. you when you rush. The work is shoddy. That's it, including commentary and analysis. We must always be rushed. We must always be rushed. We'll go with no that way. excuse. Yeah. yeah, that's good. All right, so uh, Chris going to use that uh, once upon a time, and he found I think it was uh, Duskwatch Recruiter was what he picked up in hand. All right, that's a card that. Uh, functions as a win condition for the infinite man combo as it just doesn't win the game by itself but it digs up the rest of any other win condition you have in the deck be it ballista or shalai really yeah. whichever one you find first yeah. all right so i've been fetching out hallowed fountain gonna go for an opt he's got that mana leak again here and um wow eldamri's call for chris and grab Devoted Druid. Yeah, Ivan's hand looks pretty stacked, though. He's got he's got Path to Exile. He's got Mana Leak. So you see Eldamri's call. Uh, for green and white's instant, search your library for a creature card, reveal that card, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So Does not defend against Mana Leak, sure however. Sure does not. Uh, Chris, without a third land. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty brutal. There's an Aether Gust hanging out in Ivan's hand as well. Man, he's got the tools here. See what well, Chris there. probably must have a lot of tools also to be... Uh, we didn't hear a word about mulligans. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe there was some, but um, it looks like he's got four cards in hand and obviously no land, so there's some business there. But if it can't get deployed, really, really if we can't run out... All, none of our cards that matter cost less than two, and... With only two mana, that means we can't defend anything with Veil of Summer. And that makes the game so much easier for Ivan to play, not having to to worry about Veil of Summer blowing out his counter spells. Sure. I think uh, what's going on, someone's getting Oracle Text on a card. Again, this is a time-shifted match currently, so uh, not 100% sure, but I, I believe we got we got confirmation from Jack. They're trying to figure out what uh, Oracle Text on a card here as Ivan is doing some thinking during his turn here. And he's got, uh, you know, like, it's a fairy time raveler, mm -hmm. path exile. He's got tons well, of stuff. I mean, so what questions could it be asking? I don't, if, I don't know. Judge, if I play fire time reveler, does my opponent have to concede? Yeah, is it just yeah. over? Mm -hmm. I think the answer is yes, actually. Well, I didn't really work for him against the previous <laughs> match when he played it and then died immediately. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so continuing on, Chris does find a third land. Giver Ruins just attacks right in, so that would suggest that no viable creature is going to come down oh this boy. turn. Oh, are we are we blocking here? That yeah, is a are. block. That's a nice trade. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's an important piece of the puzzle for Chris, and I, I assume Ivan has targeted that op that's in the graveyard here. Mm -hmm. Chris looks to have a Vizier, the Duskwatch Recruiter that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, I think that one's up on a time. It's the other card I spot. And I think... I think is that there's post there's mortem, post -mortem lunch. Lunch, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Ivan says, "Okay." Well, okay. Drive. This this is the combo, and Oof. bang. All right, you see post mortem <laughs> lunch there. Uh, 
I mean, it's a good card mm -hmm. in this deck. It just not didn't really get to do anything there. He's uh, he, he had a path to exile. Ivan did have path to exile already. Yep. So, and that's really the only card that could have. Well, I guess Force of Nation could defend that also. But Chris going for it there, and well, at least he found himself now another land, which yep. will help him deploy the rest of his cards. Here is the Teferi. Yep. Probably gonna go ahead and bounce Vizier. Draw a fresh one. And is Ivan breaking off? No, there's. <laughs> Path is going to go on top yeah. with the uh, Mystic Sanctuary, so not a bad one. Here's Once Upon a Time for Chris. And we know about the uh, the Vizier. Know about the Vizier. Know about the Dusk Watch Recruiter. Yeah. Right, we know. What we're saying is that Ivan knows about both of those cards. Yes, yes. Eternal Witness. Okay. That's a nice card that if we can resolve it, we can continue to... Effectively grind. Do we have a fifth land for the turn? We do not. We do. Yep. Oh, it comes to my tapped. Okay. All right. So going to tick up on the uh, Teferi. It must be very quiet in here. Yes. I, I bet that's yes. why there's the, this it, no, whatever yeah, pop I, music. I, no, I, I, agree. I had the same <laughs> thought. Music, we've now, we're just starting now to hear music being played from the future match area. It's, you know what it probably is? suggests that uh, they got tired of listening to I, us. I bet I know what it is. What's up? I bet MaxCon's not working again, and he's just having a dance party over there oh, by himself. Maybe. Maybe so. Just like usual. All right. So here we have Duskwatch Recruiter played with mana available to activate it, which is... I, the ideal way to play it. It's, however, not going to make it into play. This yeah. is just going. The I mean, the witness does. If the witness resolves, that that's significant. That's, that's pretty good. Allows Chris some more function and more ability to go along. He picks back up the Eldarmy's call. Yeah. Another instant speed card. Um, there's Duskwatch Recruiter. It's a werewolf, which means it's from the Innistrad block. Yes, nice. Um, not too many sets I identify with cards, <laughs> but that is one of them. Uh, I did love Innistrad. Mm -hmm. um, apparently it's from Shadows over Innistrad. Like yeah, I man. said, it's from an Innistrad something or other. Yeah, you got it. Um, uh, two mana, two, two on the front side. Pay a green and two. Look at the top three and keep a creature if you see yeah. one. And then on the reverse side, it is a three, three that makes your creatures cost one less to cast. Crowling Horde Howler? Yeah, man, I got it. You were going to get that? Crawling I knew that one. Okay. Yeah, I man. would not have come up with that. Nailed it. I nailed it. Yeah, I played that card a bunch uh, back in the Collected Company days, I think mm -hmm. it was. It's sure. A, that was quite quite the card. The way that works in this deck, why it's operationally in there, is that you can make infinite mana. You can basically look through your entire deck to find the combo pieces mm -hmm. once, you've, uh, once you've assembled infinite mana with that card in play. In the meantime, we have Jace has joined the board, and we still have the Witness out there, so we can do some attacking if the path doesn't come back down. And we do have the Recruiter back on the board. So that allows us to activate and continue to find cards. Chris is managing to resolve cards that matter. Yeah. But Ivan's cards might just be, just look a little better at this point. Although his hand is not as, as large as it was earlier. Yeah. Jace on the board represents several cards. And wow, that whiffs. whiffs. And that's kind of something that's going to happen. Yep. I'm with you. Jace down one. There's Eladomri's call. Chris go get here? really making an effort to push through his um, cards, regardless of the timing for his own self. It, whenever Ivan, whenever it seems like Ivan doesn't have counter magic available, Chris is casting stuff, even if it's not the ideal time to resolve it. Yeah. And Ivan dropped a card on the table there. Briefly. Path to exile. Yeah, a path to exile. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so so Chris's last card is an Eternal Witness. I mean, I mean, Ivan's just in such good shape here. Gonna so brainstorm with this Jace. Still, he's gonna need to deal with. You know, you need a sweeper here, or well, to protect his planeswalkers. I guess a another sacrifice range would do it also. Yeah. Here's your sweeper you asked for. Sweeper, yeah. But a witness follow-up to a sweeper is pretty good. Yeah, especially when there's another witness to get back. You can immediately redeploy four power on the board yep. with another card in hand. And that's probably, unless unless Chris is considering well, dialing up this postmortem lunge to set up something, which that is what's happening. Yeah, Ivan has that fetch land available, and uh, he put the Supreme Verdict back on top of his deck if he so chooses. Mm -hmm. 
We also have the path in hand, so we can defend the Planeswalker here if we need to. Yeah. So we get both Witnesses back into play. Yeah, what's this going to do, though? I think we're oh, we're picking up the Recruiter. So we got all our cards back, and we have Haste, so we can kill the Jace, which mm -hmm. kind of forces the path. Yeah, if you want to keep uh, it. If you, yeah, so I mean, just lets it go. So, okay, trading that post war Lunch for the Jace is pretty pretty good, probably, for Chris's uh, long-term ability to play this game out. Turtle Witness, 3-minute 2 one has been reprinted a few times. I can't even remember what it was originally from. Um, seems like it would be an elf. It is not. It's a human <laughs> shaman. Yeah. When Turtle Witness enters the graveyard, enters the battlefield, you may return a card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's a regrowth as a creature. Uh, pretty pretty key card in yeah. a number of decks over the years. Yeah, quite good. It makes you more resilient to spot mm -hmm. removal and yeah. such that, uh, and counter spells and things like yeah. that. So definitely a big boon to these yeah. green base decks. Slow to function sometimes, but has also worked very well with Collected Company um, on many an occasion. Yeah, you see uh, Ivan... You know, we mentioned that Jace was going to be very important to the uh, overall winning game plan, but uh, Ivan just follows it up with a Teferi, Teferi Hero of Dominaria. So, very powerful follow-up if you're going to let one of your Planeswalkers die. Follow it up with another giant one seems yeah. pretty good. With, with with two power on the board, and you're attacking two five loyalty Planeswalkers, there's, there's no good choices here. That's pretty rough. All right, so... Chris not one to give up as the re recruiter comes back down with the ability man to activate. So again, we are still able to keep digging and keep accomplishing things and both players really ducks functioning well here. Yeah, and, and Ivan's gonna go ahead and take the time to Mystic Sanctuary that Supreme Verdict backed on top. Ivan going to draw a card with his Teferi, probably gonna wrath the board here. Yeah, and uh Chris gonna activate that Duskwatch recruiter in response. And what's he find there? Uh, he's got a vizier, and he has a choice this time. The druid and the vizier, it looked like, right? Yeah. Okay. And there's a devoted druid. So snags that. Field of ruin. Going to go after. Mm-hmm. That's just oh, that's a straight shuffle. Again. Yeah. yeah with, uh, even with three mana still untapped, plus two more coming. So he is fully capable of casting anything in his deck. And, Chris, the window is closing. Yeah, it doesn't look great. Teferi's able to bounce. Doesn't do anything. I'm going to go ahead and just yeah untap the lands with the Teferi Hero of Dominaria and send it Chris's way. And here comes Devoted Druid. There's a Gaddic Teague hanging out in Chris's hand. Oh, that's late. There's a path. I mean, that's a path. That's just, again, that yeah. card should be exiled no, here. No, it's so Chris will avoid the exile. Oh, he's just going to sack Activating it. twice, gotcha. yeah. So Devoted Druid it is just a, as a basis of yes. its mechanic working. It can prevent itself from being exiled any, at any time. I even just <laughs> brainstormed with Jason, picked up a pair of Snapcaster Mages. So, uh, not Oh, this, not if this wasn't time-shifted, maybe we could just run over and tell Chris to just give up. Yeah, just say. <laughs> Galactic Teague, Noble Hierarch. I mean, these are these are cards that are not... Galactic Teague is, a, is an effective card, but not at this yeah. point when multiple cards on the board you can already return it to hand, or in this case, we can Path to Exile. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. There is a lot of loyalty on the board. Yeah, there's not... Uh, 15 loyalty. Okay, bounce to Snapcaster <laughs> Mage. Draw more cards. Chris, thank you for playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah don't... I don't feel like this one's getting much better. I, I'm a, I'm very excited that Ivan put a fourth planeswalker on the battlefield, though. It's pretty good. All right. So. I don't even know what is that card in the bottom. That's a Ashiok Dream Rider. Oh, okay. Because why not? Sure. Mm -hmm. It's in yeah. your colors. You might as well play another I mean, planeswalker. Yeah. I mean, the goal. The, you're supposed to get the twenty loyalty, right? He's at nineteen. He's at nineteen. Yeah. All right. Oh. Oh. Mm. He's gonna stay at nineteen. Unbelievable. <laughs> So uh, Ivan Espinosa going to pick up a W with mm -hmm. his uh, blue-white control deck. So as the three seed. So both of our players are on the play. One are one in our three seed. Uh, yeah. We're going to jump to a quick break, and we're going to bring you the semifinals action here. We'll figure out who won our off-camera feature matches, and we'll bring you the top four here in just a